Hello, once again I'm Cosmic and the time has come to review the Red Solstice, an indie tactical 8 person co-op survival shooter. I actually took a look at the top down shooter way back in its early alpha state. Since then, developer Ironward has gone through Steam's early access program and now it has finally launched. The game reminds me heavily of a Warcraft 3 mod called Night of the Dead and will give players of the Warcraft 3 mod scene some serious nostalgia. The game's story takes place after the human colonisation of Mars. Humans fled to Mars after a plague spread on Earth, a plague that essentially changed people into monsters as those world ending plagues go. The capital, known as Tharsis, goes dark during a massive storm known as the Red Stolstice, and you're part of a team that's sent to investigate what happened. So the game does have a few difficulty settings, but be warned, the game is tough and only gets tougher. I really love the amount of difficulty in the game, however, there is kind of a drawback of the difficulty, particularly in the multiplayer. The learning curve is quite big, so jumping in head, you know, kind of unprepared is not recommended. I myself have had positive experiences with the community, however there have been cases where lower ranked players were booted from matchmaking lobbies, making it difficult for newer players to get into a game with more experienced players. So let's first start with the single player. Now the single player campaign has you leading a team to find out what happened in Tharsis. The game is a top-down shooter, but unlike most, it incorporates strategy elements so that tactics are required to win. The controls are fairly simple, and using the a gaming mouse will help with efficiency. Movement, interaction, and most commands are done via the mouse buttons. You will have a limited pool of abilities that are hotkeyed to the number keys, as well as a couple of hotkeys to do things like activate bombs or quickly change weapons. It's certainly not a game that you can just pick up and play. While the controls do work well and are easily enough to use, you must take the time to learn them or be left basically left not knowing what to do when the time comes. The story of the game is fairly interesting in some aspects but cliche in others and it's certainly not the core attraction of the game. The voice acting is shoddy and cheesy and the actual writing of the game stays in an acceptable quality throughout, if again a little cheesy and cliche in some places. There are 10 levels in total for the single player and each varies in size and objectives vary. The main campaign is useful to learn the ins and outs of the mechanics. What chiefly separates the single player and the multiplayer is the fact that the single player you will control all of your squad, but in the multiplayer you will only control a single marine. While in combat, you only control the main character of the squad, however the single player adds a tactical view mode which basically slows down time to allow you to issue orders to each individual. Scavenging is a key part of the game. Finding ammo, medical supplies and equipment such as explosives will be essential. Lockers, supply crates, rubble and dead bodies are all ways to collect items. However, your inventory is limited, so choosing carefully what to pick up and when to pick it up is very important. Keeping yourself alive can get difficult, and having a bad run of scavenging can mean your death, especially when you desperately need a med pack, but you can only find explosives for like 10 minutes at a time. The game's combat is fast paced and brutal. Aside from using the left mouse button to manually fire, relying on the auto aim feature is key. Auto aim will have your character fire at the nearest target until they run out of targets or ammo. I really like the feature as it allows you to move your character and plan your route without constantly having your screen locked on your character. While using auto aim makes travelling slower and does waste ammo, it is key for survival and movement. A problem however is that manual shooting is cumbersome with not only the speed of enemies coming at you, but also the amount of enemies coming at you at one time. Because you actually have to click the enemy rather than just fire in a general direction, I feel that it would have been much more smooth and fluid if you could do it that way essentially. 
I can imagine that the control of thumbsticks would have really come in handy for this particular problem and it would have allowed for continuous manual fire and movement so that it would save time and indeed ammo. Fog of war and lighting are also important factors in combat as it will not only affect how far you can see but also the accuracy of your shots. Turning on power generators that are littered throughout the game in buildings and such around the large map will help illuminate their area and occasionally they will also turn on sentry turrets that provide additional firing support. Throwing down light helps you see what's coming but most importantly keeps your shots on target. Especially in the auto aim mode it means that you won't waste a ton of valuable ammo shooting at darkness. The multiplayer is the core and most important content of this game. It provides the most fun, longevity and has the best gameplay experience that is to be had in the game. The multiplayer employs a progression element in the form of military ranks which are gained through experience. Achieving new ranks will unlock new weapons, equipment, power-ups and most importantly new battle suits which are essentially classes. There are 8 classes available in multiplayer, most of which are damage dealers but they do also include medics and scouts. There are a variety of game modes available to play and most games usually last up to an hour unless it all goes horribly wrong and you die within 10 minutes. Playing missions with 7 other players while at the same time trying to basically survive against giant Mars worms and space zombies can really get the adrenaline going. It's a fun, fast, fluid experience in multiplayer. Achieving a successful extraction at the end of a match is a very gratifying experience and indeed a well earned one. The randomly generated content of the game does keep you on your toes throughout. The progression mixed with the co-op focused 8 man multiplayer really works great. With the difficulty so high and resources so scarce, teamwork is not only enforced but required and playing with friends across VoIP like TeamSpeak um, provides the optimal experience. It would have really been a useful tool in game to include a VoIP system in the client and it does seem like an odd exclusion for such a multiplayer focused game. Multiplayer is where the game truly shines. The single player is okay for learning the mechanics, but beyond that it lacks anything special and to be honest if there was no multiplayer in this game, you wouldn't play it past like the fourth mission. That would be it, it would be boring, there would be nothing else to do. The game's aesthetic and art design takes clear inspiration from Starcraft and Warhammer 40,000. It's not a pretty looking game, nor does it have anything going for it in terms of style. It does the job to an average level throughout, with some places looking a bit rubbish. The different maps are very similar, and some diversity in the level design in terms of visuals would not have gone amiss. The audio side of things is very similar to the visual, it's unremarkable, and on occasion, like I've previously said, the voice acting is disappoint disappointing to outright bad. I encountered various bugs with the audio, especially when recording footage, so if you do think about streaming it, probably wait for a stream friendly patch. Overall, the Red Solstice is a well made isometric tactical shooter that does cater to fans of multiplayer games. The mechanics are solid and promote teamwork and the game can be very fun and very frustrating in equal measure. It has a few bugs and quirks here and there and it's not particularly pleasant to look at but what it does retain is a multiplayer experience that is very difficult to find in other games and by that basis alone it is worth a look. And that is my Red Solstice review, thank you so much for watching and listening, do like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time.